Good morning, everyone. We are here live at the MCAT studios here in Missoula, Montana, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening within the city of Missoula and beyond. Also, I got Flexor Friday, I got Pre Critic, I got a whole bunch of things, and I got a short city council. Uh, so I basically only am going to be showing three quotes from city council. Find out later in the show, but we're going to kick things off with a little bit of that weather. We're going to have a lot of rain happening today. 40% chance of showers was already raining, coming into work, all that stuff. So expect wet weather happening most of today with highs into the 48 degrees with lows into 34. Saturday you're going to have highs into the 46 with lows into 35. Um, you can see some rain slash chances of snow likely happening Saturday night as the low gets lower just the right time in time for the perfect storm for a little bit of snow and higher elevation but we might not be able to see that snow stick this weekend as well. So uh, pretty much we're getting into it as late later October happens um, next uh, week. Uh, we're still about two weeks away from um, Halloween. That's what it's called. Uh, brain fart, right? Uh, so I'm, this is me trying to ad lib, so just bear with me. All right, so uh, yeah, Halloween's happening. There's a lot of things happening in the city of Missoula. You got the Missoula Haunted House. You got the Missoula Maze. You got the uh, Haunted Maze. Um, just a lot of different things happening in the city of Missoula. The uh, Farmer's Markets. Um, I just wanted to make a quick announcement on that before I talk about them a little bit later during my events calendar report is that uh, your Farmer's Market will be ending by... Uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So we have two more farmers markets on Saturdays in the city of Missoula before they stop doing it. But they'll be starting to do the winter market sometime in um, November, which will be at the Missoula Senior Center. And they also do a couple of those farmers market at Orchard Homes by the barn just off of reserve. I'll talk more about that as we get further down the line. But let's talk about... Uh, the city wards, because the election's coming up. I just wanted to touch base on what's happening here in Missoula. Uh, election day is this uh, this uh, first Tuesday following the first Monday of November. So uh, all wards in the city of Missoula are up for election. The first uh, award, uh, Heidi West re-up against uh, newcomer Am uh, Amber Schaefer. Uh, of course, Ward 1, if you live in the Rattlesnake downtown and north side neighborhoods, this is your ward. All wards are up for election. Um, only about three candidates, uh, three incumbents uh, from the city of Missoula. Everyone else is leaving and it's going to be open seat elections for Ward 6, uh, which includes uh, the seat for um, Franklin to the Fort neighborhoods and uh, River Road. So this is uh, Nick uh, Schantz and Sandy uh, Vesecki. Uh, they'll be going there. And if you live in part of the Two Rivers, West Side neighborhoods, um, one-term incumbent, uh, Michelle Cares, is not seeking re-election in that ward. Ward 5, the open seat for uh, John Contos and Alex uh, Ferragio. Um, ward 5 includes the southwest section of the Southgate Triangle, South 39th Street, Miller Creek, and Moose Cangoli neighborhoods. Incumbent Julie Armstrong is not seeking re election. Um, Ward 4, open seat Alan Alt and uh, is going against Amber Shirell. Um, Ward 4 includes Southgate Triangle, Lewis and Clark, South Hills, Paddy Canyon neighborhoods. John DeBari is not running for re-election. Drew Iverson takes on incumbent uh, Gwen Jones for Ward 3, which is the Riverfront neighborhoods and most of the University District uh, with parts of the Rose neighborhood. Ward 2, uh, Myrda Brasser is defending her seat from newcomer uh, Brent Sperry. Ward 2 encompasses West Side, Captain John Mullen, and Grant Creek neighborhoods. Of course, uh, most of the city council members serve three years on city council with no term limit. And so far, the city may see between four to six new faces on the city council by January 2020. So here's a quick uh, look at some of your uh, candidates. Um, f you know, for Ward 1, we got Heidi West. Uh, who's the incumbent, and then of course we have got Ambi, uh, Amber right there. We have an open seat for Ward 6 right here. Um, I'm going basically based on the Missoulians uh, order. Uh, so this is a brand new election with two new candidates, and you can check this out on the Missoulian with their interviews, but also you can see video interviews on MCAT. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, Ward 5, City Council uh, candidates, they're doing Q&As. Uh, they had a Q&A as well, so Ward 5, then you got Ward 4, uh, Ward 3, Ward 2. And you can see all that by going on to Missoulian.com for more information about that. But once again, I did want to mention that the city, uh, I mean, MCAT ourselves did do interviews with uh, a, a handful of the candidates. Some of them did not wish to appear on the show, and we're still open to them appearing on MCAT. If they want to get involved, they can contact us through our website at MCAT.org. Okay, once again, I will uh, throw it over to, let's see, just a quick, uh, I just wanted to go to one of the channels, see if there's uh, a quick interview that we can show. 
Hold on one second. I don't know if we put it on. No, I think we, uh, let's see. No, I, I'm pretty sure we put it on our YouTube channel. So let's go to our YouTube channel. So if you go to our YouTube channel, YouTube channel, MCAT TV, um, or it's right here, so you see this little nice little icon. You can see some of the uh, meetings and stuff we've had in the past as well. But of course, um, most of the candidates are going to be right here. We got Amber Sh Amber Shirell, we got uh, Alan Alt, we got Gwen Jones, Amber Schaefer, we got Drew Iverson, we got Nick uh, Schontz, uh, we got Sandra Vasekia, um, Myrta Becerra, Alex Ferregio, uh Heidi West, and uh, those are the candidates that appeared on the show here on MCAT. Uh, there's a uh, still a chance for some of the folks who didn't get a chance to do it before to re-up and try to uh, appear with Joel, who will interview some of the candidates. The same question is very simple, just to get to know some of the candidates as well. All right, so that was a long um, introduction to local government and local news, but let's talk about state. Um, there was a bomb scare, is no laughing matter, but Montana schools had to be evacuated because of a plastic bottle that was filled with nuts and bolts uh, near a work site. Officials later said that the suspicious, suspicious object in uh, Rochester uh, Elementary School was not improvised explosive device or IED and did not explode as initially reported. Uh, classes at uh, Rochester uh, were canceled. I'm sorry, I'm pr mispronouncing that. Were canceled while, while authorities started the investigation, but school opened back Wednesday, uh, the, uh, the day after. Um, all Helena and East Helena schools were swept and cleared of initial lockdowns. So that's how it's happening there. And I'm going to, um, in the national news, uh, drones are becoming more and more commonplace when it comes to del del deliveries, and one student hospital is using them to get across heavy traffic. North Carolina's Wake Med campus has um, had traffic from one of their testing centers to their student hospital, and when it comes to uh, traffic of any kind, minutes can save lives. Drones will know uh, with longer ranges could eventually be a game changer in helping meet uh, med uh, medical needs in under, uh, underserved communities and rural areas, where uh, doctors and patients could be miles apart from me medications and supplies. Um, a lot of uh, rural uh, places are seeing clinics closed down. There's not enough uh, money put into a lot of rural communities. And so a lot of times the cities in the nearby uh, counties have to have to adjust for that as well. So there's no out branch and clinics and stuff like that, and emergency care for people who have those issues. But this also could help in the long run in case people have to be life flighted. So a lot of times, uh, sometimes drones will be have the ability to go to uh, remote areas to provide medical attention to, fee to some folks who could be there. Um, but of course, uh, Walgreens is also testing an on-demand delivery drone on a limited scale in uh, Virginia. Um, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos said several years ago that Jones would be delivering Amazon orders to our homes 30 minutes or less via drone by 2019. Um, it's not a, a question of can, it's a question of when. So there's a lot of regulations when it comes to drones, figuring out airspace, traffic control, um, even th there's a lot of issues happening in and around because uh, for one example, just offhand during the fire season, not last this summer, but the summer before, is that a drone was flying around the airspace during a fire, which caused a lot of the uh, uh, f uh, the planes that had the retardant um, to put out the fires have to be landed because of it, and the person was fined. So there's a lot of regulations around drones, and they're just trying to figure out how they're gonna move forward especially with a commercial entity like Amazon. All right, so that's kind of what's happening in and around the world today as well. Of course, um, you guys can check out what's happening with Trump and his um, this whole impeachment thing that's happening as well, but I didn't want to talk more about it because it's really just kind of like rehashing the same stuff as well. So uh, let's show you guys uh, a nice uh, little newsworthy item as well. This is really cool. Uh, there's a new trail that just opened up near uh, Clark Fork River. It's in the parking lot near the uh, Imagination Brewing Company, and it's just off of, it's the uh, West Broadway Island Trail. So if you get a chance to walk it, um, it's, uh, it's a beautiful trail, and I got some beautiful footage, and without further ado, here's this, and when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. So it's a beautiful trail. You get a chance to check it out. It is a wonderful place to go as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's happening um, in the movies today. Uh, let's kick things off with a movie that uh, is a sequel to a, a movie that, I don't know, it kind of ended with a nice bow wrapped up and everything. But heck, this is kind of like... Um, just like a continuation with the same characters, but this one's more like meet the parents, the in-laws, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, in the world of Maleficent, you get to see a dark uh, fairy who uh, basically uh, um, indirectly raised a girl, and she's just like, I'm her mother now, and just kind of had an infatuation, just kind of became obsessed with this girl, and now the girl wants to move out and move in with her uh, family's parents because, hey, they have a castle, and, you know, Angelina Jolie's character, Maleficent, is like, oh, well, I have the enchanted forest and magical and stuff like that. It's like, but, you know, not too many roofs over this uh, head in this area, so, you know, she's a little more indoorsy in that regard. So, uh, Aurora, played by Elf Henning, uh, is back once again, and her uh, boyfriend's uh, mother is like, uh, you know, you're going to have to move here if we're going to get this working. Uh, and then um, Levison's like, I don't think so. And then the mo and then the in-law mother's like, well, you did. And like, oh, oh yeah, well, I'm evil. I have magic, all that stuff. And then they fight and things happen. And maybe they see eye to eye. Maybe they don't. one of them dies. Maybe somebody, somebody really takes that turn for really evil. I don't know. You know how these movies happen to be? It's always like, you know, I understand from both sides, but then one of them has to do something extremely evil or bad to be like, all right, this person is the lesser of two evils, so we have to go with the uh, the uh, the mother. So, evil again, roar, uh, <laughs> this movie. <laughs> Up next, we got a sequel to a movie that has been made uh, 10 years ago from the writers and directors of Deadpool movies. Uh, they were like, hey, Disney's never going to let us make an R-rated movie um, again. So, uh, they with another studio, they're able to make Zombieland, which brings back Woody Harrelson, who's just a delight. Emma Stone, who most people hate for no reason, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, your least favorite choice for Lux Luthor, and uh, some other girl. Anyways, uh, so anyways, all these uh, f folks are better than ever, I guess. I don't know. It's a zombie comedy. It's You have zombies, and there's funny things happen. There's a bigger budget, things happen, and there's more characters. I don't know. They just put a lot more into this, and, you know, we'll just see how it works out. So, uh, anyways, this is Zombie Comedy in which zombies show slash media are getting worn out. Uh, anyways, just watch another zombie movie. Uh, next up, uh, you, you like funny uh, Nazis, right? Wrong. Nazis are wrong. This movie is about to show you that the lighter side of Nazis through a child's eye as he comes to grips with that xenophobia is wrong. Um, and blaming others for your own insecurities are bad. Anyways, watch this movie that stars Taika Waititi as the imaginary Adolf Hitler in a role that he uh, kind of just fell into. I mean, he was directing this movie and just like, all right, who's going to play this character? I guess I will. So uh, this, uh, hey, maybe this movie will make you stop talking about the Joker so much. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, kind of like one of those movies for like an Oscar-esque movie. So if you really think about it, most Oscar movies have war, the Nazis, um, and a kid um, coming of age kind of movie. So it kind of has a lot of things happening in this as well. Um, so this movie will probably have comedy, but I'll, it's it's marketed as a comedy, but from what the clips have been showing, it's been kind of being like, you know, it's probably a little bit more than just a comedy. So anyways, uh, enjoy this movie. Or, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty much going to be like um, he's a kid who's like falling into the, um, the, uh, uh, the Hitler youth, and he goes to the camp, and most of his uh, people in the camp bully him, and he's just like, well, I want to be part of this group. And then his mom's like, hey, listen, honey, maybe the kids that don't want to accept you are representing something that's wrong. And he's like, that's wrong. You're wrong. I hate you. All that stuff. And then he comes to terms that is just like, oh, maybe uh, uh, Jewish people aren't so bad as they're led to be. And then he learns a lesson, and things happen. And uh, But, you know, it's... Uh, Taika Waititi film. So um, one of the good example of it is uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. That's a, another good example of um, kind of like um, misinterpreting uh, who you think people are and who they actually are. All right, that's it. Uh, I don't know if you should see these movies, but that's basically what you're going to get. So anyways, uh, that includes your pre-critic. I have a movie from some of the kids of a local area MCPS school happening next. It's time for the flagship Friday. And the kids worked on this movie for three weeks. So without further ado, here is Monster. You see here, all you can live forever. 
forever because of this monster right here. The cells multiply and that's how you can It's five cells per second. Like, and then there's this stuff proving my point. How amazing is that? I heard you killed that golden giraffe. Oh yeah, I shot it right between the eyes. <laughs> so guys, can I think of my presentation? Oh, it's totally oh, garbage. Oh, that was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. That was my entire life's work. Two cells for every five seconds. What is that? You'll all see. If it was legal, I'd do some scientific hunting. You know what I mean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if we okay. catch. But oh my gosh, Jericho! Why did you do that? Is there anyone else here? I there isn't supposed to be. Hope this brings me luck. You might be wondering why I called you here. Yeah. I'm gonna hunt that beast. His head's gonna like, make a nice addition to my trophy bag. You're gonna hunt him with your bag and the whatever that is? Those are my herbs. You crazy. I don't wanna die. You're lost. I need you. Where is he? Dude, we need to call Geo. I dropped my phone. You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my info phone, so we gotta get in a safe spot. We gotta get in a safe spot. Geo, we need, we need to get to the school. Quick, there's a monster. We gotta get to a safe place. Okay, come on, let's go. Avery, what is happening? Come on! What is happening? Wait, what? Wait, what is happening, Avery? I don't know. They're not gonna do that. What? I don't know. <laughs> I see you guys are having some trouble with some monsters. It's just Seth. He is no more than a wait, worthless shrimp, a naked mole rat, less than a mouse, I say. Wait, wait, wait. What makes sense is that naked monster ten hunters? Oh, yeah. So, well, well, I guess you found out my secret. Ah! I'll kill you now. Oh. Now I'm gonna have to kill you. <laughs> I need help. I dropped the herbs and the back. Come on, we're gonna need the big guns.
little I injected myself with the perfect serum. I am the perfect human. Oh. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if they were going to use the Nerf guns, I, I made them having to make that little uh, public service announcement at the end for gun safety. All right, mo <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about some uh, things that are happening within the city of Missoula in terms of parks and conservation. One of those examples was the uh, West Island Trail that I showed you earlier in the show, which kind of highlights the... Um, the the uh, the new uh, money from open space bonds <laughs> going to the city of Missoula renovations access to trails and restoration of a lot of areas as well. But I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. So kicking things off is that the city moved to uh, look into open space bond money to work on improvements for certain open space areas throughout Missoula, trail signs and non-native plant removal, um, and also planting some bitterroot, um, working with some native tribes as well. Um, November 2nd will be the public hearing for this, so if you have anything to say about certain open spaces and natural conservation parks and stuff like that, they're having that public hearing on November 2nd, which is usually on Monday. Um, Donna Glockler, uh, Director of Parks and Recreations, talks about planted native bitterroot. Um, so without further ado, here's this. A very um, awesome project going out on right now at Fort Missoula Regional Park in the natural area. We're working with the, the tribe to plant bitterroots uh, to, uh, because this, this is where they came on their regular excursions for gathering and so we're trying to reestablish that incredible um, aspect of our history. And so, Donna, just to interrupt you on that, I read the, the news um, release that came out on it from Ginny. It's K through 12 grades that are planting, yeah. all from the tribes yes. and the different schools, so that's a really it's a cool thing. So. All right, so that was Gwen Jones at the very end talking a little bit about that. Um, other than that, um, the main projects, they're talking about it in three main slates. Of course, there's a lot of other projects they're working on, but the big three are the Clark Fork Sustainab Sustainable Access Project, get access to the Clark Fork River while also restoring some of the areas, uh, restoration to the banks, and also uh, preparing for the uh, the potential max wave that's going to be put down there. And, you know, the max wave is going to be further down, down there, a little bit past the Orange Street um, bridge, and so that's what they want to do. They have open space re reforestation, reforestation, whoa, reforestation. Oh man, I can't say that word. Reforest station project and uh, conservation lands project. So um, Donna reflects on the this as a as a public need. So this is what Donna Gockler had to say about this. 
most is when we completed the Park Recreation Open Space Trails Public Opinion uh, Survey and received that information uh, last spring, early summer, May, June 2018, and we shared that with you, something that we heard very loud and clear is Missoulians countywide want trails, 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 open space, open space, habitat, natural resource protection, access, education, and they also, for the first time, made a pretty big deal out of, and we need to take care of what we currently have own. And so that was a really important component for city council and the mayor in considering the 2018 bond, is that indeed we were going to take care of some of those lands that are open space lands so that the purpose under which we obtained them, acquired them, are continue to be protected in perpetuity and that we don't simply degrade and love them to death as the as the saying goes and and do little about it and so that's what these three um, projects represent or some all right so that uh, once again um, Donna Glockler was talking a little bit more about that um, Back in November 2018, that was the chance for the city of Missoula to vote whether or not they wanted to continue the open space bond into the future. Uh, with a 63% majority in favor of it, the city of Missoula moved forward with it, with the exception that a lot of times open space, um, a lot of public outcry, or I don't know if it was even outcry, but it was a lot of public opinion saying that we should work on the open space that we already have and we shouldn't be uh, spending the most of the open space bond money on um, moving forward on, on buying more open space land. So, City of Missoula's connectivity, open land, trails, and just making Missoula a prettier, pa prettier place to go. Uh, of course, I had the video from the conservation lands that showed you from the parks and conservation that showed an example of just what they wanted to do. And the reason why, if you get, a, if you really look at the video itself, I'll I'll bring it up just a little bit more. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, details of this as well. Um, so if you guys get a chance to look at this. Hold on, let me just get a, a nice shot. Okay, so as you can see here in the uh, video itself is that um, this particular area right here, they made the trail, it's not it's not concrete, it's made from the dirt as well because this is a potential floodplain. Uh, this bridge area will overlook the uh, area, this is technically the Clark Fork River, um, so the area you know, more of this, you know, nat natural uh, plants, um, areas. You have a, a little drain in right here as well. Um, you know, perfect area as well. You got to go from one bridge to another part of the area as well. So if you did get a chance to see any of it, there's the other side. That's the, uh, the south side. And finally, there's the Clark Fork River, as you can see right there. And so that's one of the things that the um, uh, Parks and Conservation is working towards um, continuing in this uh, in the future as well. So Donna asked uh, for, uh, th these are a lot of things they go through the city board to ask for some money for the open space bond money. So th one of the asks is the $225,000 of open space bonding for the Clark Fork River Sustainability Access and Restoration Project. Missoula is building more towards the river, and Donna thinks that this is a prime opportunity to uh, build out um, and work in having natural trails and access to the river uh, w uh, just in time for uh, the Fox Hotel to start getting built in that particular area in the Fox Triangle. Um, here's one they're talking about, Waterworks Trail. This is the first project they want to work on going into the 2020 year, and this is a, uh, a newly acquired property uh, uh, that was acquired when the uh, pu when uh, the city of Missoula did public domain on Missoula Water Company. So there was a lot of open space, a lot of area as well that they're working on. And they're asking for $135,000, which would be going towards updates to the waterwork trails up in the mountain on the uh, on north of town, you know, where the peace sign is. And so that's Waterworks, and that's what they're working on doing to improve it. And here um, is a nice little top-down view of what you guys, is, of what Donna Glockler is talking about. In Missoula Water, I don't know that we always thought about all of the additional benefits in addition to having a well-maintained water delivery system and managing the, our own quality of water. What we're able to do in partnership with Missoula Water are things like take out the lower rattlesnake intake dam and restore it to a more natural condition. We're able to take the Waterworks Trailhead and now minimize the area that 
that is the protection zone for the reservoir and turn this into an accessible path so folks can get up on open space. And we have not yet determined what we will interpret up here, but I keep thinking about, wow, what happens if we interpret Missoula's water through history uh, all the way from the, the value of the Rattlesnake Creek to Native American populations or way back to Glacial Lake Missoula and to Missoula's um, procurement of the water. All right. So, um, and one, one, one of the things that the money is coming from is that they're working this through uh, public domain, of course. Uh, Money is uh, not only in open space, but they're also working with public grants, uh, public works and grant money to help improve the area just in general. Uh, Waterworks Hill is the kind of like the where we get a lot of the clean water. Um, um, so a lot of times Waterworks Hill is that's one of the first projects that they want to hit the ground running with in January, well, as early as 2020. So. The next thing uh, Parks and Conservation wants to do is uh, is use existing parks uh, to reforest areas. So reforestation is a big uh, thing that they're trying to do. So what they're trying to do is use the uh, city parks and improve the areas that have the highest exposure to folks. Um, some people don't have direct access to parks, planting trees in these particular parks, and this is for $250,000. And this is going to be happening between a two and a four year plan with all that money that's going towards it. So planting trees. Uh, of course, uh, most of these projects are levering money and are, are not just taking out of existing open space bond monies. They're getting grants. Um, the Waterworks Hill project is uh, working with the Public Works through some of the money that they get through your know, rate pays and all that stuff as well. But of course, once again, the public hearing for this will be happening on November 2nd. If you want to give some feedback about how the open space bond money should be put towards. Um, the money is going to be there for a, a while now since they got an extension back in 2018. So now the city is just going to determine what projects they're going to be working on in the future. All right, so that pretty much does it for your city council report. I have a bunch of new programs going to be airing on MCAT, so we're going to kick things off with some new programs. So without further ado, here are some of the new things that are happening on MCAT, and I'll be right back right after this. There should not have to be student climate activists. <laughs> We should not have to, be have to be missing school right now to get adults to do their jobs. It should not be left to young people to save the world. But right now, it has been. This is going to take everyone trying their very hardest. We should have been able to count on the adults to take care of this emergency, but they haven't, so we demand a voice in our future. Welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening within the city of Missoula. One of the big things that are happening is a play in a day. MZ, MCT, Missoula Children's Theater, um, is working on to uh, have a all-day um, theater camp on most Missoula County Public Schools have a no school days. It's PIR day for Thursday and Friday, which Thursday doesn't count because it was yesterday. And today, they're just, uh, you know, you always got to check out for uh, some of the, if there's ever a day off at MCPS, uh, MCT really jumps on board and, um, um, 
does a play in a day. Play in a day is perfect for kids who are wanting to get involved with theater. This one's happening right now, and it goes until by 5.45 p.m. And, of course, the performances are 5.30 p.m., and the tuition is $50, $50 per kid for a whole day. <laughs> Friday's theme, most, uh, most uh, monster, oh, monster raid um, balls. So a monsterade, a monsterade. So it's like, it's it's a dance. It's a it's a fun dance. Uh, the big night of the monster masquerade ball has arrived, but no one is ready. It's time to put your creative costume skills to work and prepare for your grand entrance. And that's what they're going to be doing for kids uh, kindergarten through eighth grade, all starting today at the Missoula Children's Theater. Indoor sports stuff: Missoula Gymnastics, uh, uh, Bitterroot, uh, Root Soccer Sports Center. Um, you got uh, Missoula Gymnastics. You got Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, and finally you got the Flying Squirrel. All of these have some kids uh, times for a lot of kids who are getting involved, uh, want to jump on some trampolines, be in a safe, padded environment while they're inside during this rainy day. It's kind of crazy, you know. The kids get the the weekend off, and the whole weekend is just uh, garbage. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But, of course, that's what's happening there as well. Tiny Tales, Missoula Public Library. Get inside, get reading. It's a good way for kids to uh, uh, cont uh, pick up on um, reading skills. Uh, this is for uh, birth through three years of age. Story time is another place where kids can gather, listen to stories. They do finger plays. They do um, readings. They mean the, uh, the dragon rug or otherwise specified. And sometimes they meet in the large meeting room as well. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Center is open at 11 today as well. You can join them for uh, National Fossil Day and the Forces of Nature with us at the Discovery Bench, and they're doing spinning tops in their makerspace. Cribbage and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30-ish p.m. today as well. Uh, Zentangle Day, Missoula Public Library. Zentangle Drawing during this workshop provides are provided. It's a drawing workshop, so if you want your kids to get involved with some drawing during this first half of the class, they will learn to uh, practice two new uh, Zentangle patterns and or strings. They'll use these plus their own ideas to make original final art piece to take home on a Zendangle tile or card. This class is appropriate for kids ages 8 to 108, but all, any children attending must be accompanied by an adult and should feel comfortable in a quiet classroom environment. Space is limited to about 12 participants. Online registration is required. You can go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for more information. This happens from 3 to 5 p.m. It's a fun afternoon of just drawing and art. Uh, YMCA Family Fun Time from 3.30 to 5 p.m. as always. It's a fun way for kids to uh, work with a family, go to the gym. $17 if you're not a member. Is if you're a member, you get free. Nerf on Turf. Um, you get to play with a lot of Nerf guns, and you get to shoot each other or something like that. Uh, but that happens pretty much all weekend long Friday. And they're doing it from 4 to six, four to 9 on um, Friday. They do it from five, 6 to 9 on Saturday. And, of course, 5 to 8 on Sunday. Nerf on Turf is fairly popular. And I, I wonder, because in Missoula Indoor Sports Union will be doing their dodgeball league sometime starting soon, hopefully. Um, and that will be pretty fun. So, intro into motorcycling, HD 101, so uh, Grizzly Har da Harley Davidson, uh, they're doing an outreach program to intro into motorcycling uh, starting at 5 p.m. tonight. Casual event for anyone interested in learning a little about motorcycling and the culture around it. They'll have product demos, rides, and the jump start uh, prizes and a chance to win a free HD Riding Academy course. Grab a friend, then RSVP at grizzlyhd.com slash HD 101 to come check out the awesome world of motorcycle riding. So you can check out you can Google uh, Grizzly Harvey to Davidson for more information about this as well. National Fossil Day Celebration. Um, Spectrum Discovery Center uh, is doing their Fossil Day Celebration for the kids. But now you can do it tonight as well at 5.30 p.m. This is going to celebrate National Fossil Day at the University of Montana Paleontology Center on Friday, October 18th, which is today. Um, guided tours of, of the displays and collection will be given by the collections manager and PBS Eons host, Kelly Moore. So that'll be fun. The, it's three one-hour tours will be available starting at 5.30, 6.30, and 7.30 on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, serve, first-come, first-served basis. Space is limited. Get your free tickets at eventbrite.com to reserve your spot. Uh, they also ask you that you arrive 15 minutes before the start of the tour. The tour will travel from first floor to the basement and then to the third floor via elevator. Keep in mind that there are some walking and prolonged periods of standing. Kids are welcome, but the event is aimed towards grades fourth and up. Tours will begin on the floor of the C.H. Clapp building on the south side of the campus. Beckwith Avenue parking is available in lot B of the east building. Enter through the breezeway and look for signs. All right. Haunted Hollow, Carousel for Missoula. 
like I said, there's a lot of haunted things happening as well, but the carousel from Missoula, after getting their million dollars uh, just recently of money, uh, get, uh, a, don a major donation for the carousel for Missoula, um, that that would scare anybody, but a happy scare. But you could also get happy scared at the Haunted Hollow, which will be happening on October 18th, 19th, 25th, and 26th. And this is from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Dragon Hollow is a place to where it becomes a haunted hollow. Bring your kids down for a not-too-scary, kind of silly flashlight tour of the haunted playground. Occur earlier in the light for a less scary experience or brave the darker hours. Perfect for kiddos ages birth to 12 years of age. $5 for all attendees. If you're under three, you get in free. Um... Pianissimo. It's a big deal that's happening within the, uh, the, um, within, um, the University of Montana. Um, Stephen Hahn, all those folks down at the uh, piano course will be uh, hosting Pianissimo. It's going to the movies. So if you like movies and you like to feel nostalgic for some of those old classic movies and some modern movies as well, uh, the University of Montana School of Music presents the 12th annual Pianissimo. And they're happening uh, tonight and also tomorrow night and this year they're going to the movies with arrangements from your favorite uh, popular music for movies and of all genres. This high energy show boasts over 25 of Missoula's best known pianists and UM school students performing of, on five pianos for your entertainment uh, not to be Miss Missoula original. And also something that's happening, which is not too original, but at the same time is kind of an original show. Um, Mr. Burns, a post-electric play. Um, it's happening at the Montana Theater. This is the last uh, theater performance that they're going to be doing this weekend. It is basically in a post-apocalyptic world where people use um, old Simpson episodes as inspiration for uh, bringing uh, joy and levity to an, a dystopian society. So, not dystopian, but an apocalyptic society. Bring in joy and all that stuff. So, you guys can enjoy that um, all weekend long at the Montana Theater. You can go there for tickets in the box office, or you can go online to grizzsticks.com. All right. Whew. I'm going to take a quick break um, <laughs> to take a catch my breath, because there's a lot going on on Friday. A lot. But uh, I, this is a uh, art installation of the Clay Studio of Missoula, which will be ending next Friday. So, you still have another week to check this out. And it's ceramics. So, uh, called Go Figure. Such a uh, such a wonderful exhibit that's happening at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Go figure, and that's the name of the exhibit that's happening until next Friday. All right, so let me see. Do I have any more videos for you? I do not. I have ran out of all videos, so I'm going to spend the rest of the show just talking to you through my face hole. Um, <laughs> Saturday, it's the last two farmers market. Uh, every Saturday from 8 to 1 p.m., a farmer's market happens at the uh, Red X's, which is the OG farmer's market. you got the People's Market right from the, top, the Thomas Marr Bar off Pine Street. And then underneath the Higgins Bridge, you can start trolling it with the Clark Fork River Market folks. All from 8 to 1 p.m., they got some foods, they got some uh, food trucks, and most of all, they got community. I don't know why I'm selling that, but you know what a farmer's market is. Um, Missoula Genealogy Roadshow, Family History Library, free and open to the public, hosted by the Western Montana Genealogy Society and Family History of Library. If you ever wanted to find your family stories but didn't know where to start, you'll 
want to attend this free and a pu a public event. Um, one thing that I always found that was cool when I looked up some of my past in history is that I found that one of my um, family members uh, did uh, sign into Ellis Island back in the back in the day. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Brondersliv is the last name. That's my grandma's maiden name. Um, you will be paired with the experienced genealogist for a 15-20 minute session using websites available through the Family History Center. You'll be guided through the process of finding documents and sources that tell the stories of your ancestors. Join us Saturday, October 19th between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at the Missoula Genealogy Roadshow. Um, you can email them at wmgs at outlook.com for more information. You can message them on Facebook. So I believe this is going to be at the Family History Library. Um, once again, on Saturday, every Saturday, all basically all year long, we're doing our MCAT Saturday drop-ins. Um, so starting at 1 p.m., Missoula's Community Media Resource. Uh, join us every Saturday for MCAT Saturday drop-ins. Your kid, artist, uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. can make media through stop animation, live action, editing, uh, some cool drawing. We have some tablets here as well, so it's a wonderful resource for kids. $10 for, ten dollars for kids, $15 for siblings. So if you have a uh, brother or sister, 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 brother, brother. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's the only combination that there is. Um, $15. Um, you can also, uh, if you have three siblings within the age group of about 9 to 13, you, they're all count as a sibling group. So it's a sibling grouping of, of that. So it's $15 for siblings, $10 for each kid. We also do half-day deals for anybody who wants to join in half of the day in um, and just get a, a great experience in working with uh, media and all that stuff. Just get a start. Um, f a fall Family Fest for Missoula Regional Park. This happens from 1 to 4 p.m. It is here for the time for hay rides, apple cider, and old-fashioned family fun. Fort Missoula Regional Park and Missoula Parks and Recre Recreation invite kids and their families to freeze to death. Just kidding. Um, the weather changes. It's all over the place. But happening from the annual fall festival, um, Kaboom Play Day on Saturday, um, October 9th. Kaboom is an organization that helps build playgrounds for kids and uh, it's a big grant program and they also did a big playground in the Rose Park just last August. If you haven't checked it out, it is a beautiful new park. All abilities play. Uh, the su suggestion donation for this event is $1 per person. Proceeds benefit youth recreation programming. They got a drag show. It's a Halloween drag show happening at the Ballander tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, for a spooky start the rain of tw uh, rain 25 as we present the I. CSM Halloween. Come dress in your costume. There will be a costume contest that you hope come to celebrate the start of our next year. Um, and this is 18 and up. This is at a bar, so just so you guys know. It's $5. Um, and yeah, um, that's what's happening. It's a Halloween drag show. Um, Sunday, um, I just wanted to mention one more Sunday event because this is another spooky event for all sorts of families. It's called the Spooky Skate. Enjoy Halloween party on ice at the Glacier Ice Rink 7th Annual Spooky Skate. This event takes place on Sunday from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Glacier Ice Rink. Um, it's, and it's the old, uh, it's Missoula Fairgrounds. You can't miss it. Uh, a short performance by the Missoula Figure Skating Club and on ice costume contest or dress up as your spookiest characters and you can have an on ice uh, costume contest admission and skate rentals are ten dollars for adults and eight dollars for kids under 18 uh, you can go to gl uh, glaciericerink.com for more information but it's a fun spooky skate so there's a bunch of other things happening in the city of Missoula and if you are interested in finding out more you can go on to the city uh, um, the Missoula events website missoulaevents.net hey what's going on Missoula you got Missoula city uh, missoulaevents.net Check it out. Forget about it. Anyways, I don't know why I said that. That's terrible. But anyways, uh, if you want more information about um, MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org, and you can find out everything that you need to know about us. Um, be, make sure to go to our Facebook page on MCAT as well, because we are doing an Editing 101 class um, starting in November. It's going to be the first Tuesday in November and also the second Tuesday in November. Um, and you can find out more information by going on to our Facebook event page. But once again, I wanted to... Uh, 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 make sure that if you guys wanted to learn more about my show, Wake Up Missoula, you can Google me and you can bring it to this nice webpage, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can enjoy all sorts of fun act, uh, fun videos from the past, uh, fun videos from uh, Flagship Friday. You get some um, br um, Do What I Just Drew stuff, which speaking of which, uh, Do What I Just Drew will be hopefully airing on Saturday. Um, last weekend we had a, a, a bit of a problem because Rowan had to do something else. 
And so uh, we're doing um, Do It Is Drew tomorrow night live. But also, there's going to be a sports game that's going to be live on our channel. And it's going to be uh, Hellgate. Um, it's I think the Hellgate's going against uh, Billing Senior. And they will be, uh, or is it Senior Night? I, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Hellgate High School. We'll be playing some football game tonight at starting at 7 p.m. Um, and we'll be broadcasting on our channel 189, but also live streaming it on our Facebook page. You can check that out by logging on and liking our Facebook page to get notified whether when we are live as well. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.